expecting Jace played in a bot lane role, but I don't think that'll be it here. That's likely to be going up to top for Acolyte. Likely to be Gragas in the middle lane with Morgana going down into the duo lane to kind of just deter. I feel like that means Joey and Methanaut for game one are basically never going to want to be in lane <laughs> against the Draven with a Karma. That sounds really terrifying. With Draven, I feel like the snowballing potential is really key in this yep. bot lane matchup. T truly key because they're relying a lot uh, for Rix. It's not the only way that they can win this game, but they're relying on a lot of early game snowballing to close the game out quickly before the Jacks from Andre can come online. Uh, that does mean that the one thing you're looking for if you're a Team Queso fan is that Draven to not get any kills. And even if he stacks up, if you kill him, you cut it in half. If you kill him again, you cut it in half. Yep. And as long as you don't let him cash in, Queso fans will be happy watching Doom go 0 0 0 on this matchup. <laughs> or even, you know, like 0 5 0 would be what they're looking for. On the other hand, if he's like 5 and 0, constantly cashing in, Draven very rapidly gets one, two, three items ahead of his opponent if the game even goes that late. And that becomes very, very scary. And I think the, the most important thing as well is that SE7 is on an aggressive jungler. This is kind of his pick. This is what yeah. he normally plays in solo queue as well. And that means that he's probably going to be playing around this bot side Ooh. of the map, but he actually goes for a level one before he even starts the jungle. Important first flash down from Feos. Now, one of the things is Gragas can play very securely, very safely, but now with no flash. And I want to comment on the way that we've seen teams beat Team Queso is generally taking the fight to them early game in the jungle and making sure Andre doesn't have the time to get into the game. Queso will give extra CS, will give extra presence, extra wards, time to Andre all the way through the game. And the best teams that have unseated Queso online in the tournament have been the ones that say, no, your jungle belongs to us. Andre, you don't get to play the game. Yeah, definitely. And he's gonna go back oh, to mid lane as well. Is dead already. This is exactly the turnaround for first blood oh, in the no doom. game bottom lane. This can't be happening. Oh. Oh. We had the read on it being aggressive from Rixon in their favor, but Methanol's going to hit Hello? two. That'll let him get away. Wow, okay, one trade apiece. One but in mid lane. There's been a lot of mages to wave clear as we go into the bottom lane for an engage. Joey Skaggs doesn't have a splash available. That will be the kill going over to Lee Sin. But Draven's wave clear is pretty bad. Yeah, for sure. And against the Morgana, Morgana could just put the pull down. The wave clear is going to be there. But SC7 is In the moments where SC7 is overextended, hang on, Sin oh. is going to flash Proto Belt fling into the lane. There's the kick. Oh, the mechanics are on point. Even the Singe mechanics doesn't matter because Ricks are going to pick up the kill. They even give it to Seven. Rare you say Singe mechanics, but flash fling into the kick into the Sonic Wave is exactly what Ricks needed top lane. Flash Proto Belt. And this is what everyone does on Singe. They just go Proto Belt first yeah. item. And it's just pretty much like a setup champion in a way. You just roam around the map because you can clear the mid rave really, really easily. Sometimes you can even leave the mid lane like they're doing at the moment. He's going to try and get the top tower, but there's four, three members down in this duo lane. They're not going to do much at the moment, but Doom rotated up instead. They're going to try and get the first tower of the game, which they'll be able to do without even using the Rift Herald. Yeah, that'll be a significant moment for them. You can see Acolyte has got the whole breaker and it has been... Uh, Bestowed over the buff to the Cannon Minion won't last too much longer as Team Queso. They're going to try and break mid tower, and as the Karma ult comes through with the Whirling Death as well, it's not enough to actually take anyone from Queso down. But the the Minion Wave. wave. Once this Rift Herald is gone, we've got a little little moment of the game where there's not really a very obvious place to go. Mega Adhesive buying the tower is going to deny Methanol. With quickness has been popped. Explosive Cask is actually going to blast everybody away, and as the Rift Herald charges, it won't pick up mid tower either. So both teams failing. Jace pushing bot. Yeah, Jace is putting And then push dies again because he has no flash. And like, it, the Draven got knocked out. But in this game, it's Acolyte that may be getting knocked out here. Hold Breaker won't do enough to keep you alive against three people. Good attempt. <laughs> Rick's trying to give the kill over just a little bit. Waste a little bit more time. And it's gone over to Snitch to make that singed even stronger. Gold lead, road, roughly about 1,000 gold lead now for the mid lane. The jungle as well is about 700 gold ahead. There's not a lot of gold lead, Ooh. but Andre and... Quickly just does it up into top lane, and now Acolyte and Andre will push the tower down. That'll open up a little bit more of the rift as Rix are going to be able to take out the dragon. And it's interesting that despite all of that power, all of that presence, even before that kill, there was only about a 600 gold lead on seven on the jungle, and that's with three kills on top of it. So. Queso have done a good job of slowing down the game, but I don't think that they can slow it down too much longer. This Rift Herald is going to drop, but who's going to get it? It's Rick stealing it away with Karma. Clue picks it up. A Methanaut over the wall will be able to get back away. There's another tower has fallen in the bottom lane. If Joey dies, Doom got a kill. Brave, Doom already cashed in. Double, Double kill is going to allow him to accelerate even faster into this game. Feos will get caught in the bottom lane. I think he should be okay, although with the suplex under the tower, the body slam should it's be enough. It's the first item. Just get that little bit of healing. 
Saying that. Might need some Acolyte's healing dead. in the top lane for Acolyte as uh, Redemption <laughs> comes out as well, thrown into the mix, and Team K. So it was looking good. It was looking close for a while, but I think these last few fights. Oh, five, seven, seven. Downtown, but it's all about his own demise, or is it? He gets oh. away, and the team actually play frontline. Methanord is going to get dropped to begin this one. It's another kill going over to Doom. It's a killing spree, and Seven playing on the edge <laughs> right the way Lead. through that. 3,000 goalie pretty much for the side of uh, Draven oh. on Doom, but. SC7 as well again. Yeah, the Blind Monk has been spotted. Great knockup from Methanor to keep him in place, and it's just going to get the fling back. The kill will come through as it's a rampage for Doom. He got himself the MVP yesterday in the series in game one. It started badly for Doom. I'm just going to put it out there getting caught in lane, but he's now picking up all of the kills that he needs. Whirling Death comes through, but it's already picked up from random on this set, and Ricks are in full control now. 11 kills to two. Entire yep. fight. He's in behind Acolyte. The kick should be all too clean. Off the flash fling as well. It's another kill going over to Ricks, and I think they really have put game one in the books already. Seven oh, dashes seven. behind the tower. Guardian Angel should keep him alive even when he drops, and in come the rest of Ricks. They're going to try and play defense, although Snitch, he's found himself under the enemy tower. Maybe it was a little bit too far as Jax is pushing on the side lane. The tower's still alive, but there's the stasis from Joey Skaggs. No flash, no exhaust, no way of getting out. And Veos, he has three low health targets in front of him, but no abilities really to do it. He has the body slam and the flash. The stasis as well. It's an inhib going down and the cooldown's up to, in order to take the one versus three. It's locking him down under the tower and Clue takes him out. It's doomed. He's pretty much unkillable. Yeah. 5,000 gold lead now. 5, 1, and 3 Super on this Draven. Super far ahead. Uh, Random has a flank. He's going to find Veus and slam him into the rest of the team. It's an assisted body slam this time as Veus has dropped. Snitch has picked up the kill and acted like can't group with the team quick enough. Queso are getting torn apart. It's a double kill for Snitch and all the rest of Queso are going to drop. It's all too clinical in the late game for Rix. They're going to push through the lane and take game one. Very, very clean game by Rix there. Macro play at seven on this Lee Sin was absolutely dominant. Went into the mid lane at level one, got the flash, rotated to bot lane as well, and that is going to be game number one to Rix. An important game one for yeah. Rix as well. Um, last year they had their struggles a little bit in the finals um, going up against Queso, and at this point, it's uh, it, it's a good start for them. It's it's a very very good start for Rix with a, an unconventional comp. I would say this wasn't what I was expecting out of Rix, like with with a Draven. And I mean the singed was right. Uh, the the set I think I was like, wow, I'm not expecting that. Is it like a sleeper OP pick? Rix pull it out in game one, and it looks pretty good. Yeah, I think in the best of seven you can always like try these things in the first couple of games, kind of like a testing round to see what you can get away with. Because now Team Queso are like, okay, we have to ban away the Draven now because Draven for Doom. Even though he did get caught, and he was a little bit over aggressive at level one to get caught by the Dark Binding, but I think seven on this Lee Sin, mm -hmm. really, really dominant performance. It, that's that's basically his pocket pick champion. That's what he always plays in solo queue, and he's just he was all around the map. He was mid lane, bot lane, top lane, being able to get the ganks and being able to get that early advantage for X. That game truly was the best of seven, and that <laughs> might mean we only have three games, but there's a total seven games to play. If Rix keep that up, it could very well be a quick finals. We'll see if Keizo can bounce back in game two when we come back from a break. Uh, I feel like this is like again a similar hyper carry composition with the Riven and then you have the Karma, Shield and Movement Speed, you have the Shen uh, Shield and then also Galio that can jump onto you. Cats have nine lives but seven wants Rengar to uh, basically take them through this game. <sighs> it's uh, it's an odd pick. We we don't see it too much. NA first pick Rengar. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> also like yeah. Uh, there's also the build variation where you go for more uh, tanky Bruiser build mm -hmm. on Rengar, which could fit into here depending on if he's snowballing. If he's snowballing, he can go for the standard lethality build just to watch out people. But if he's falling behind, he could also go for more like Bruiser build with a Black Cleaver, Divine Sunder, or maybe even a Sterox Gauge, which would make him a decent frontman as well. I, I would love us to touch on that if we see it in game a lot, because there, there was a time in, in PC when I was casting that people were trying to build like tank Rengar, but it really just on stage went down to all you were doing was throwing out the bowler and rooting one person and you're like doesn't really do anything yeah, else but, but Wild Rift is to, a different to, game yeah, to right? be fair his base sets are crazy so yeah. even if you build him tanky he can do a decent amount of work but I feel like C7 he's a player he wants to go aggressive he oh. likes to go for the lith uh, likes to go the lethality build. I'm totally expecting that to be the case. And we saw in the last game seven pop off on that Lee Sin. This time around, it's going to be the Rengar out of the jungle, and we'll see whether Team Queso.
can get through this second game. Only 24% of our audience in Twitch chat actually believe that to be the case. I think C7 is going to go for the new, or should I say, quote new, uh, full clear on the Rengar since the reason why C7 actually didn't go for the full clear and ganked, uh, tried to get Grandom instead. He's trying to get Methanol now. Methanol dropping low. That's going to be first blood going over to Doom. It's uh, the opposite of the last game as Clue will get run down on the back end and they're feeding perhaps kills over to Andre. It's a double kill over to Joey as well and three quick kills. Turn that back around in Team Queso's favor. One I think, of think that's typical for Seven that sometimes the miscommunication is there. Yeah, now it's bottom lane that Snitch is trying to get himself out of this. It's an overextension from Andre for a moment, but the Galio Alt has made the entrance oh so sweet. Killing spree for Joey. Team Keso is snowballing and rotating so, so well. And Joey on his comfort cocky pick already 3 0. Has the Storm Razor finished up? That's going to be trouble for Rix. Big they got trouble. the first turret and the next Dragon Team fight is going to happen. Yeah, Snitch is already here though with the rest of Rix and they can take it down quite quickly. Lucian uh, has quite high damage when you're using his abilities there. Just yeah, team Keso is actually trading and trying to get the top turret instead. Yeah, I think that that is going to open up the map a little bit more for Acolyte to split push. You, you mentioned though that <coughs> Camille can typically handle Shen the later the game goes. We'll see whether Veos can handle Seven as uh, he gets pulled back. Fighting a Rengar around a bush is not a very advised thing to do. Two members of Keso up here try and sidestep some of the damage. Oh, random. Seven. Random's no. going to sidestep some of the damage, but will get taken out, and it's all Team Keso. I think that was a bad decision by Random, trying to defend decision when you're so <laughs> behind already. He is at 5,000 gold. Yeah, and we'll see how it pays off in this fight, because already the first kill has gone down, and that crit build is not going to allow him to survive any longer in that fight, and it's all Keso all the time. Snitch is going to try and put the culling down on the side, but at this point it's just tickling the health bars from Team Keso. They will be able to push through mid lane, they'll look for more off this fight, and it's Rift Herald 2 coming up in 30 seconds. Team Keso is just snowballing so so are playing the map perfectly, That's getting the rotation advantage. Well, I, you're totally right. Uh, and. I am 100% on board, but that's not a surprise to anybody, right? Karma's been banned in any game. Yes, right? there's uh, a reason why she's always banned. And we're seeing why Snitch is getting run down here in the bottom lane as two kills have gone off already to Team Case. A good stun on the back line. It's going to turn this back around, and Rix have survived a little bit longer. Seven, he found the crit seemingly in that exchange. We'll pick up two kills and are going to slow. If you are in a lead position, you don't want to Ooh. give anything. Damage coming through, and, and he's that just it. Andres has stolen the mountain drake away and it's all that they need a double kill for queso methanol runs down snitch in the bottom lane a triple kill comes through for andre looking to pick up the fourth of this fight as random will hook shot his way away but you can't run for now andre gets the dash but it's not enough there is a reason we call andrew that one of if not the best jungler in europe right now he is so crazy five zero eight that's a hundred percent kill participation on him Random gonna try and dodge some of the damage, but that's four people there. And I've got to say it, Andres is the only true jungle carry in the EMEA region for Wild Drift. Other junglers can carry, but Andre will reliably carry when given enough resources and gold. And that's what Team Queso on the top side. Now Team Queso are going to try and push this down. No Baron available for a little while longer as the teams are moving top side. Shen on the bottom lane. No hull breaker yet. Has gone more towards full tank. Is uh, trying to absorb some of that presence. Ooh, good explosive cast. He's going to open this team fight out. Stasis matched from both sides. Galio's going to break the fight up as Methanol puts himself right in harm's way, but Joey's already died, and that perhaps is the moment the Ricks want to turn this back around. Shen has stayed in the bottom lane, though, and if Ricks don't kind of commit to this fight or don't get anything more, at least it'll release pressure on Acolyte's side of the Rift. He's going to be able to push out and deny Ricks anything bot side. That was actually really well played by Clue on the Gregors, picking out Joey with his ultimate. Oh, Faeus is forced to flash away. It's going to be another pick, though. Stasis out from Andre. He's going to get a shield. Ultimate. He's going to have damage. There's the Karma ult on top of it. And Seven, he healed so much, but it just got shredded back down again. And Random is having to get away. It looked so good for Rix at first, but all of the utility comes back through. You cannot kill Andre. They are rushing the Baron right now. And Joey also picked up the package. This is going to be a very, very hard fight for them. <laughs> and they need to somehow steer it. If they don't steer it, Team Queso is going to win this game. That looked ridiculous. Andre was just like, 
Right, I'm gonna get the plant as well. Look at these mechanics over the back of the wall. Andre, I said you can't kill him, but he's ticking down. One health, he's going back in. He secures it. Now the rest of Riggs are trying to get away from the situation. How did Andre survive in that situation? Literally one HP and he's still in secured sweet. from Ricks because it looks like it's all about Team K. So Acolyte is running down random through the jungle as well as Team K. So push the first inhibitor of the game and they're looking to end this one. Yep, this is looking so badly. And the Rengar that is behind him building a crit build can't kill Joey who is a Baron buff and who is super fat. And now they, they're knocking Ori on two tier three turrets and if they group up in the top lane they can just secure the last one and I think this is just gonna be the game. Exhaust saves lives and you saw it there from Joey Skaggs as soon as seven jumps towards him exhaust comes down the rest of Team K so gonna regroup as Veos on the front line is gonna stasis for a moment 2000 health on this top inhibitor and that means all three are down as Rick's they're going to have super minions streaming into their base, but it won't even matter for too much longer because Team Queso are going to take us to a one-on-one -on -one series. Team Queso put their first win on the board against Rix. It's the Karma. Well, Karma is just so strong, and we've seen that in both games right now. Karma's damage, Karma's uh, utility value is, like, just giving all of her teammates movement speed and shield makes it so hard for them to keep up with the rotation from Team Queso. There's a very, very well-known saying about Karma. A lot of people talk about it, you know? Just right now. Karma's a ban. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say it live on man. stream. You think I'm going to get fined or suspended or whatever <laughs> it is. I'm not about to swear. I say that. <laughs> let's, let's see how this series goes for the rest of it. Uh, I think that was what Team Queso needed, really to settle themselves. They play their own game with the Enchanters. They get themselves a win in Game 2. Let's see after the break if this series continues going Queso's way. It's 1-on-1, one one, Map 3, coming up in a few minutes. Evaris from Champion Selector, or am I going to wait and see whether he builds a dagger first? I mean, long or do I just put it out there and then either way... It's okay. Uh, what I was going to say about that is yeah. this Ari pick into the Karma. I think, like, Snitch, even though we don't see him play a whole lot of Ari, I think Ari's one of those champions that I'm like, sure, he can play it, it's fine. Uh, and against Karma, there aren't too many matchups from the middle lane that I... I'm, position, I think, is surprising. That's a fair point. And uh, not only that, the range they can cover with their engage, the follow-up is there as well. Kaisa, plus, like, Galio on top of it. Like, everybody jumping into the backline. Like, <laughs> backline threat is something that Varus really hates. Varus struggles when he yeah. has no flash and no escape. Yeah, that's one of the problems that they're gonna be facing in this one game. Um, it's kind of like Gali when you think about it, like you go the all in, but you didn't go the all out. Yeah, yeah. When you commit, you commit. One Direction, there is no way out. Uh I was about to show my age and talk about One Direction. Then, I, mean, but I was about to talk about this. <laughs> every, everybody watching is way younger than me, and I think I'm going to upset people's opinion on that. So I'm just going to move into game for game three hey. between Rix and Team K. So let's see how this is going to go between these two teams. Rix, of course, will be looking for game three uh -huh. to pick up in order to take a 2-1 lead. Team Queso trying to ride that momentum from the last game. And so far, Joey has built AD. So clearly, I mean, we know that AP... Uh, Varus plays very well into tanks. Not, I mean, there's kind of tanks on the side of Rix, but the early game is where Joey should have a little bit of pro uh, presence in this lane. You have to feel like Leona and Varus together, if they do find and engage, mm -hmm. they can put out a lot of damage, lock someone down, and take him out very quick. Yeah, absolutely. You use the Sunny Blade and then the Slow Flare. And I guess he wasn't expecting it to be quite that close. Well, I mean, this leaves is some cases to take Dragon freely, rotate towards the mid lane, perhaps try to stop the Herald from Riggs before they can end it. And indeed, Random is going to have to run away from the area, and so he's seven because he's cornered. Oh, Acolyte off the Taunt Flash is going to lock him in place. It's going to be First Blood going down to Team Queso. I believe oh, they even get the Dragon at Random. the same time. Random has now been caught. It was seven that was caught oh. first. Now it's Random caught for a double kill for Acolyte, and it happened in the last game where Acolyte <gasps> took control, and now maybe it's happening again, although from long range, Doom has taken one down. Doom has taken the Herald. And Rix, maybe that's enough to keep him in this You've fight. Acolyte likely to turn that matchup a little bit oh. more in his favor early. This time, though, Rix are going to actually prioritize uh, punishing Acolyte. A snitch is trying to flash away. Will dash, uh, dash away from oh, the Solar Acolyte. Flare. Now, topside Acolyte was on his own. He was solo. No flash. Couldn't get him out. But they've traded. They found Snitch, despite the fact that he was able to get over the wall. <gasps> oh, Chains of Corruption land. But Joey is one versus two in this situation. And then it's a third over the wall as Clue is here. Wasn't even 
needed for the kill, and it's scrappy on both sides of the map, but Ricks pick up topside kills as Queso dive bot. Yeah, they're going to be exchanging towers right here. Andres is going to be wave clean in the mid lane. By the way, Andres already has the Divine Thunder, which is obviously going to help him or get more. Before the Solar Flare to hold him in place for even longer. A little bit of stacking doesn't quite land. And Kaysa are going to push down the top tower. They have a can of minions. Should be enough. Yeah, absolutely. The Dragon is already there, though. And Rick seems to be retained to his area, leaving <laughs> Accolade alone in the Dragon League. They do not want to let you talk in this game, as Seven is hellbent on defending topside, and that means Seven is going to die under tower. Andres? Andres keeps going forward. He doesn't even try and back himself away from that situation. That's actually going to put Clue <gasps> in a situation. Stand United from the opposite side of the map is enough. And now it means Team Kaysa may very well just all in on this next inhibitor. Maybe they, they want to just keep pushing. I feel like Andres was backing away, though. Stand United used, that is a big cooldown, but well, Dragon... He's going to eat anybody that oh, he oh. uses a Captain Rain on, and this is the opportunity. Clue is going to give him perhaps a setup <gasps> for the dash into the oh. fight. Doom is here, Doom is exhausted, and once it's down, maybe the damage can come out as Rex are going to turn this back around. This was exactly what Queso couldn't afford, as Doom just has too much damage, and actually Random, coming into the fight, has turned his fortunes around in this game. He was 1,000 gold down. I believe he's now 1,000 gold up from the amount he's been able to take on the side lane. Oh! There's the explosive cask. He's going to have impact regardless of the build. It's all about Rix walking through this fight, and Doom is going to unleash the damage from the Kaiser. We saw him get the MVP in the semis on this pick. And Andres, this is a two versus four. No way a Karma no, and Riven no, actually no, going to go for no. it. That's a lot of damage down onto Andres. Surely he's going to die here as Rix are going to pick him off. It was a little bit too much hubris from Andres to think he could make that play work, but Team Queso are going to push Rix back away for now. But he says no time for Queso uh, to actually play the team fight in an extended way. And then Clue and oh, Doom oh, just oh. kind of tidy everybody up as Snitch is going to get locked down in place by the Chains of Corruption. It's going to lock onto two, and Rix may very well have overstayed now as uh, Snitch has already dropped and into the back line. Andres will take <gasps> advantage of oh. the squishy Gragas from here, but Andres will get knocked up. Is there enough in the tank for Queso? They've turned it back around. That's a huge turnabout for Queso topside. Random oh. Acolyte, oh. Acolyte has the tower. This is not a one versus one, but that hole breaker from each side. There are so many cannon minions in this wave. The <laughs> all important tower in the middle lane still stands for Doom. It allows him to clear out the wave, but it's about the Baron. Random is backed. He's bought the teleport. Boots by is coming through. Look at them flying on the left side of the screen oh. as the teleport's coming in. 8,000 health on the Baron and Queso. They have, no. have to take the engage as Doom is going to back away over the wall with the Guardian Angel. He is still secure with that ultimate as well. They've okay. denied the Baron, now Rix are going to teleport in. Oh, they can't escape. Random does have the chance to do it with you. Oh, oh wow. over the wall is Methanort. Seven doesn't quite find what he needs at the beginning of this fight, and I think Rix are going to back themselves away. They invested a ton of gold into these teleports in oh. order to fight, and oh. Random with the Hextech ultimatum. Andres <gasps> is locked in, but who's locked in with who? As Andres sets up Joey for a double kill, and Team Queso have managed to hold on. Wow, okay, this wasn't a su such a long team fight. All about who could make less mistakes. And in the end, it was Tim Kaiser, the ones who managed to survive, taking away two team members for Rix, who now have the chance to take this dragon. And if Felna Warn will be quite useful for this damage adaptive warn. But Tim Kaiser doesn't surrender, just his stress. The gold between these teams is dead even, but between the lanes tells a different story. Top lane or baron lane, however you want to put it, for random and acolyte is in Rix's favor can be played into Wild Drift. It's a, it's a fundamental of macro gameplay in League of Legends oh. PC. And in this situation, if there's a fight on the opposite side of the Rift, Acolyte can join and Random cannot from this moment. And that's why Rix are going to, once they've now seen multiple members of Team Queso, will go for the Baron because they know Chris that Random no. is winning this as Acolyte. He doesn't have anything to keep him alive. No. He's going to fall under the tower. Random's going to pick up the kill. And yes, Andres has exchanged it. But meanwhile, over at the Baron. <gasps> that is a fantastic engage out of Methanort. It's going to deny the attempt at the Baron. No. There's a teleport has been picked up from Andres, and this is all about Team Queso. They thought they had the numbers advantage. They thought that they could take the Baron, but in comes Andres, and the teleport was picked up. Team Queso, it's a one-for-one -one trade on the Baron laners, and I think instead of flipping it at Baron oh. themselves, they're going to go for this in the fight on the top side. Seven drops low. The charm oh, is no, beautiful Joey. from Snitch to keep him alive, and Joey has died on the back line to Doom. Doom doesn't have the damage, but he does at least have the Guardian Angel for now. 
Snitch picks up another one. This is oh so scrappy between both teams, but some clutch plays on both sides puts three kills on the board for both of our finals teams, and the gold couldn't be much closer past the 18 minute mark. What? Oh, he's gonna back him away from the pit. Oh, we're coin flipping. This is a total flip if they go for this dragon right now because Andres into the fight, gonna get blasted back away to safety, but all of his health bar is gone. And Team Queso, this doesn't look good for them to start the fight as Andre already dropping low. Joey forced to stasis on the back end, but look at the low health targets. One big play might be enough, and it was an attempt from Acolyte to get it, but Ricks have managed to play the team fight beautifully and hold through to pick up the Elder. And with 40 seconds left on the death timers, I think they just have too many options. The the honey fruit from Andres to heal him back up with the karma. Flash over the wall, looks for it. Who got the dragon off? And Andres has tried to go in as Veos is the only member of Team Queso still alive. It was stolen by Andres, but I think the game has been taken by Rex. I can't believe what they da just did. What, Although, the to, to speak. Bluntly, it's 10 seconds. Eight seconds on Methanaut and Veos managed to stay alive. Gets blasted back. It's all about the minion wave. And Veos, does he throw himself into this? Uses the Karma Ultimate. Uses the Stasis. The wave is gone. Kato still have a life in this Whoa. game as Doom Stasis out. Joey will pick him off. Change the Corruption lands. They pick different targets. Methanaut is trying to chase <gasps> him down. Senate connects. Seven is trying desperately to back away. And no way. No way. I didn't pop off for Whoa. Andre. But it's all out about the dragon steal and team queso keep themselves alive in this game what a fight right here methanaut seems to be carrying kind of the game taking make doing the decision making right here now they are able to take the mid lane tower the next one um, of the rigs members is going to be spawning in about 20 seconds which gives them more than enough to take another nexus tower and perhaps get closer to the end of the game big taunt from clue or at least the attempt to isn't random uh, has he got the health to keep himself alive oh. damage reduction comes through massive knock up and okay so they're not quite as healthy as they would have liked and with eight seconds left on the death timers of doom and snitch there is what, another what? twist in this turn tp coming through from team queso is this the over push they're going to try and rush it down a thousand health left on it and team queso <laughs> take game two over ricks despair despair from ricks from a surely one game it was so close but the dragon steal is crucial oh my gosh it was so 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 Crazy going for them. If you think about it, Tinkeso hasn't played this game properly or as well as we know they can do. But in the end, for me, what's caused Rick's uh, defeat here is their own mistakes. No matter who played better, it's a matter who made less mistakes. Oh, I, I, oh, I, you know, I don't like directly disagreeing with my co-commentators, but I think there's only one thing that caused Rick's to lose this game, and his name is Andres Ripping. Ripping victory from Rix with an Elder Dragon Steel, buying enough time on the back end of that fight with Veos, allowing them to cut out the minion wave, hold at their own Nexus, and run down middle lane with the Elder Dragon buff is the exact kind of ending for map three that we want to see, and I hope we get more of this. This is a banger series. Game four is coming up in just a few minutes. Stick with us after this break. Tune this for Rex though, because Morgana can actually clear out jungle faster than the Jax, which allows her to invade, because they cannot let Andres get to the late game with Jax. And actually, I that kind of maybe clues in a little bit of why the Ziggs picked to me, because I'm looking at Shen and Jax, they're great on opposite sides of the map side lane, and then Ziggs can just kind of wave play, use the old position right there. They have a front line, and the Singed as well, by the way, they have a front line to block out the engages from Rix, to keep Joey's Kax alive on the Ziggs, and to allow him to do as much damage as possible to hard carry the game. It'll be a fun game to watch, I hope. I'm looking for the late game team fight where Doom tries to ult through, and he goes over Mega Adhesive and stops. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. right next to Singed, he's like, I'm going in! Stuck. That would be horrible. That would be a disaster. But indeed, the, the, I guess the way that Rix can kill Joey quite easily would be with the Kai's ultimate. But here we may have a cheese strategy. Ooh, Snitch saw it coming just and in time. We actually saw the opposite of that in game one. Like, Veos had his flash blown, uh, and it was the singed going in and actually getting the, the fling. This is the opposite of this matchup. So 
Snitch, I think, will be kind of like laughing to himself and think, you really think that's going to work on me after we did it to you in game one? No, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm too, too smart for that. No, this is not going to work on Snitch. He knows what he's doing. He, he, does, he barely makes these types of mistakes. You know, he know he's calm and collective. If he gets beaten, it would be in the late game. Here he gets thrown over, but he knows. Like, Snitch is the type of player, very consistent. He knows his limits. He won't get caught off by these weird little plays. And um, as we can see, as Sis or Seven is not doing a full jungle clear. He's doing like sort of a half jungle clear on the red side. And I assume it's going to be a full clear on the blue side. Goes for the scuttle and then tries to get level 5 as fast as he can. And then he'll go for a gank. I feel like laning against Singed. You just kind of get used to getting thrown at it. is available for Akamai oh. if he wants it. Binding lands, you've got to be careful under the tower. Great black shield early on as there goes Acolyte to dodge out the exchange from random, ticking down the minions are trying to get him. Seven is trying to run away and it's Veo is trying to chase him. Oh, he closed the gap. It looked like he was out. It looked like they were out of the Acolyte. Hey, oh, he gets, he gets him. He oh, gets him. A rare mistake from random in the one versus one. He chose the all in and ends up dying. A attacking with a basic attack, your opponents in the middle of minions is going to get aggro. And you can see the random is going to use his minions to try and push down Acolyte into the base. Yeah. If you hit them with an ability, it doesn't aggro minions. I think that's a really important difference. This bot lane, we're going to see the fling come through. As wow. Snitch. Wow. Oh, Snitch has got out as Queso. We're going to taunt them in place. Clue's going to drop as well and back away to the turret. Oh, Clue stays alive. Stress, you ban away Singed. I, I, yeah. I'm not going to stress this enough. I cannot stress it enough. You ban away Singed. Like, this champion is just unbelievably broken. It's so fun. So it looks like... Uh, oh, Andres is going to go for this. He stress. is going to He try. is going to go for this. He doesn't have a flash. This is a, a one-way trip uh, if he does go for it. I can tell you why he did not go for it. He knows his <laughs> limits. You know why? Clue was waiting for him. As the I found it surprising that Random, regardless of Acolyte getting that kill on him, regardless of Acolyte actually getting an entire turret, Random is still ahead. Yeah, I mean, Random has done this a lot, right? And I think we've casted many games for it as Andres is going to get knocked up, get bound down. In comes the Stand United. Andres is backing himself away. Needs to put Shen in a Redemption. position. There's the fling. His explosive cask splits the pack. Galio coming into the fight now as well. Two knocked up, but there's no damage follow-up. Queso very low, but have they juggled it enough? They juggle the aggro. Queso somehow survive with all of their support. It's all about the shielding and Queso Somehow they hold for two kills in exchange for zero mid tower under threat though. In comes Methanort. Oh, not enough damage on the tower. That's going to be random caught. Taunted down. Methanort slams the ground for another kill. This is a whole different beast of a case. Such deep champion pool. Such consistent and, and flexible playstyle. Maybe they're undoing because Team Queso have a game plan and they know exactly what they want to do. This time, however, it's Rix to maintain control of the dragon. But that is a massive taunt by Methanort to pick up four from this exchange. If they can convert these kills, Queso will just extend their lead even further. It's two kills after the four-person taunt. Rix, they're scrambling, but they're not holding on to this game. And yet again, Team Queso seems to be giving away dragons for a gold lead. And in this moment, they're going to be getting two mid lane turrets for its rest. Maybe even the inhibitor turret. They've killed out two people, and they have the Rift Herald pushing. Taunt lands, and that's going to be Queso taking another one. Rift Herald will get the charge. Onto the inner queso. They they can see that they're a little bit low from this. They're a little bit damaged, so they're but going. You to do not give Methanot Galio because if this guy is feeling comfortable as we have a oh, fight. Oh, random already half health, and Joey manages to flash away, he keeps himself safe as Clue. He's on the front line, but Andres. he is take damage. Oh! Taunt comes through Galio down on top as Andres has set him up for the engage. Snitch tries to back themselves away with the explosive cast, but Andre has the counter strike running. Clue is gonna headbutt his way back through the fight, but he's in the poison he's in the toxic and it's all about doom can he put enough damage stitch. out body slam is gonna keep him alive as stitch gets the binding to deny the stand united and the tiniest amount of health is not enough for Veos to stay alive somehow some way rick's trade evenly at least to begin that fight i'm going crazy right here so steam queso is playing so no well time, and it's not even the after party yet for this one as ricks are wanting to hold this and make sure we stay in this series the mid turret is still alive for team Queso as well, which is crazy to me because it has 300 they gold. In, they found one, it's seven, he's dropping low off the trail. Snitch, however, finds a beautiful explosive cask and Acolyte's ultimate wasn't available. Andres was 
up in the top side of the jungle, trying to push on that side lane. This composition that we said would do so well if Shen and Jax can and push the side. scary moment. A dra another dragon fight, and last game all went down to the Elder and the Steel from Andres. And Andres this time has a later game scaling jungler on top of it. But here comes the exchange as Methanord into the front line, triple torn, and the torn from Shen. Snitch is playing out of his mind on this body blocking, but it's not enough in order to hold through from Queso. Look at those magic shields. And Team Queso are going to back themselves away, try and cut through the middle lane for the Baron. It's only random that's down. 35 seconds on that death timer means he's not available for a Baron attempt, but. Ricks have at least enough health to start taking this as Veos drops low. The damage from Singe is there. Oh. Methanol again with a multi-person taunt into the fight. Ooh, I was going to say goes Clue, but he holds. He holds his nerve and doesn't overextend. The, think... razor. the only explanation I see is <gasps> him. Joey got caught. That binding is huge. Seven has found it. Forced to stasis. Joey, can he get out? Stand United keeps him available. Doom into the back line, but it's not enough. As I think Ricks may have turned it. They've taken out one of the carries, and that's a good explosive cask. Snitch has turned it on for this game. Everything is landing when they need it to for Ricks, and Doom flashes out over the wall. Veos, he's going to lay as much poison trail as he can but I don't know that the trap has sprung yet as Methanol oh. is gonna get beaten down by Clue. Clue flung under the tower but Ricks are advancing to get back into this game. We are now only at a thousand five hundred gold difference as Veos can't quite close the distance on random. Seven four just items. Doom sitting on four and a half items and we have a fight. Uh oh okay so they thought they wanted the fight because they were in a bush and actually the damage has gone down onto Snitch. Veos' damage is shredding them through with the poison and it looked so good for Ricks at first. Is is it going to stay that way though as Doom 7 flashes out away. Joey on one health tries to regroup with the rest of the team. It's a double kill coming through for Doom. He's the one carry left for Riggs to hold on to this. It's two kills already as Andres and Veos are the only members of Queso that are alive. And Veos is going to lay as much poison trail as he can to try and deal with the health bars of Riggs before an Elder Dragon. Man, Doom's positioning is just way too good during these teamfights. As you can see, he's sitting on full health as well. This guy just goes to the backline, kills everyone, takes a turn and just carries the game entirely by himself just Ooh, we're going to calm it down just a moment. Or I Ooh, say they start the Elder. But they know with the Ziggs ultimate, they have seen that it has been started. 8,000 health left on the objective. They have an Elder start to push Andres away too. This is it for Rix. This is it. If, uh, if Andres can get in there, he didn't get it. Andres oh, he got it, it again. Andres he got it again. again. Two games in he a got row. It again. You cannot be serious. As no Rix way. cannot secure the Elder Dragon. It's all gone to Andre. And is that the series? Is that the moment as Queso? will rip the game got it Rick. again two games in a row oh Queso my god stress i'm losing my dragon. voice i'm losing my voice this guy is just way too good he did it again he did it again it's two games that they should have lost they were in such an unfavorable position because they're up against the alistar who can push him away but he steals it again. He just steals it he wins and now they win and they're up 3-1 stress no Way you cannot deny Andres from the Elder Dragon. I, and I'm, I'm out of voice stress. Two, I'm out of breath. I I, I can't games, talk anymore. Two games in a row. Rick's had it won. They had the late game. I, they had everything. You even said it. They had the Alistair to deny Andres. You just had put him away, but it didn't hit. Andre jumped in. He found the opening. He bypassed the crowd control and he steals the Elder Dragon and the team just clean up. He finds an opening. He always does it. That's what we said. And we should keep believing it. Because even though this was an obvious favorable position for Rix, it was the right call to make to start off that Elder Dragon. Somehow, some way, he does it again. He comes through, he steals the Elder Dragon and they win the game. You cannot account for the clutch. You can, you just can't do it. You're like, okay, we're in, we're ahead. I mean, they don't even believe it themselves either. Uh, how can you? How can you? It's just like the guy runs up and steals Elder twice in a row. You've won the game. You've got the late game, Kaiser. The game is done. Every coach looks at that and they're like, okay, we've won the game. That's it. The game's done. The game is over. We're we're three one up in this series because realistically, that is where in a different timeline, in a different multiverse, Ricks are three one up in this series and they're one game away for turning around their fortunes from last year. But can you believe it? Is this going to happen again? I think that, te that Team Queso, for a second year in the row, are about to steal the finals from Ricks in a way. Team Queso, a very deserved 3-1 lead. We come back for the next game, perhaps the deciding game in just a few minutes. You must stay with us.
Grace is going to go for. I mean, it's a great pick. We've seen him carry on it last time. Yeah, we've seen him carry. We've seen others carry on it, both from uh, a mid lane. We haven't seen too much Graves out of the jungle. That's what I would say. And I don't really expect it to be the Morgana. Um, there is, of course, that flex available if you wanted to put Graves in the middle lane and run Morgana into the jungle. But it doesn't fit the play style of Team K. So on the other side, you know, I think it's maybe a desperate call even from Rick. You know, I think, you know, they're in a tough position. I think Doom is sitting here right now saying, you know, give me that carry champ. I'm going to carry him. <laughs> well, we'll see whether he can actually make it work. For, um, uh, for the team is, I mean, Ricks now are in do or die situation for the next potential three games. They need to win back to back games to uh, essentially reverse sweep. I mean, they of course did pick up the first game of the day, which we all thought, okay, wow, Ricks looked great coming out of game one. Team Queso turned it around in game two, and then two games followed that Team Queso stole from Ricks, but it's all about that Nexus kill, and that's what went in favor of Team Queso for the three-game lead in this best-of-seven series. And it's, I think a small interesting thing, I mean, we see a little bit brawl in the top lane here, I don't think there's going to be a big trouble for either of those, those players, but uh, Methanol actually went for fun of life on the Nami. I, I, I usually like the uh, summon Aerie, because that can help you bully the lane more and, you know, be really aggressive, try to push uh, Vayne into a really uncomfortable situation, but he went for the fun of life, which is obviously, you know, going to help heal and reset later in these team fights, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's the way to go, but Methanol definitely has an idea behind it. <laughs> I love Random it. really has to give respect over here, but it hasn't happened yet. Veos is maybe going to give oh, him the exit taunts. there. Taunt lands, and that's going to expire the jump from Random, but Team Queso can't overcommit into this. Look at where Andres was, and now Snitch is coming up through the river as seven. I don't know that he was spotted before he got into the lane. Smoke screen comes out. Andres is going to have to flash out over the and wall. And he's here. He's, he's so on the, the adhesive. That's going to prevent the flash. Really important from from Snitch, and that's gonna shut down the carry from Queso. That was an amazing W from Snitch. It made the only way Anderson had out there was either flash or quick because oh, he was right in that annoying spot when you don't quite have the recipe cost to cover it. We're actually seeing both teams play away from each other for the most part right now. I say that as Andres is kind of like spotting out Snitch and Clue, but with the Rift Herald going down. Queso, okay, they're making the dive work, cutting in with the package, but look, the damage has not been found onto Clue as Clue's gonna dash back towards the minions to try and cut them out. Oh, that's a terrible mistake out of Methanort, trying to predict the escape, and Methanort has not set his team up, but the, the rest of the squad will at least pick up one. But in comes Seven from the side, flash under the tower. The turret actually did go down in exchange, and Seven, has he done too much? It's an oh, no overextension. Team Queso, that was really scrappy, but come on, the kills go over to Ricks. But Random is pushing in the mid lane. He's actually approaching the second turret with that Herald. It's going to be a huge loss for TQ actually in the end. I know that they are goal even, but Random has a 1,000... So much action there as the rest of Ricks will now go back in as Clue. Ooh, Clue gets just demolished to begin this out, and Methanol finds his way back to safety. Ultimate nearly coming out. Low. Great bubble from Methanol, but look at how low everybody is. Random is trying to find the low health targets, but Keizo have turned it back around. No way! Every time Riggs feel like they're taking the lead, Keizo hold on! And TQ knows the number one rule of League of Legends. Don't change this, chase the singe. So that's why Snitch ends up surviving this uh, fight. But you know, I even though that TQ is actually starting the dragon right now with that package in their base, yeah. but Veos is caught. Veos is caught, but Dark Binding is going to put seven under the turret. In comes the rest of the fighters. Joey's going to be able to get his way back out of this exchange. Will Valkyrie out? No sticking damage to pick up kills from nice now. Redemption. Redemption will catch most of them. Oh, Acolyte doesn't quite get the taunt over the wall. And now Snitch has damage in that poison, but it takes time. It takes time to tick. And with their, all the middle turrets standing as well, Rix is really playing the map very well, but it doesn't really matter when Tiku is actually still winning the team fight. So, you know, if Rix keeps on this up and actually starts winning these fights... Oh, Mega Adhesive is going to deny Joey the escape and it had to force him down into the package, but actually Ricks are going to engage into it as Queso stay on the burning Whoa. ground and the big kill comes through for Andres. Snitch is out of this one and that's going to mean the Dragon going over to Queso. That's exactly what I talked about. Ricks is playing the map well, but TQ is winning the fights. These guys are individually playing an insane level right now. I mean, it, what can you do in your rigs? You know, you're pushing the bot lane, you're pushing the top lane, you have control over the map, but whenever that fight happens, TQ just pulls it up, off time and time again. And it's great to see Joey Skaggs and Methanol popping up and, you know, showing up and helping Anderson carrying this game because, you know, he's had a, a pretty good game so far, but I think the star of the show so far is actually Joey Skaggs. Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing that, that really has allowed Team Queso to peak 
on this finals day is it feels like their compositions and the way that they're playing has been refined to a two carry system as Andres is going to dash out. Black Shield's going to keep him safe for now and in comes Acolyte into the fight. Torn is going to hold Clue in place and Doom is trying to run for the hills on this vein. He's already forced the flash, forced the tumble. Andre is going to match him as the Condemn is going to push him back away in case it will cut into the middle lane. But what is Rick's doing? They have since split pushing in the bottom lane and they don't have the vision. I mean, I know there are four people in the top side jungle, but it's way too aggressive. Aggressive. Snitch does not have a teleport. I, I, I don't like what they're doing right now. It feels like Rick is, Rick is becoming a little bit desperate, understanding that, you know, it's hard to find an advantage onto TQ right now. So, you know, Ekla is doing an amazing job right now. And it has to be desperation because Ricks have been ahead for so long and this flank is one of the last opportunities for Snitch and the rest of Ricks to turn this game back around. Dark Binding is going to be used in the fight. First kill goes over to Doom. That's going to be taking out the Morgana and into the rest of they go as Random jumps in. Shrouds on, Joey Skaggs dropping low, seven, can he find the kill? Big kill! But Andres Big damage! Prison as Andres is still alive in the jungle! And Clue and the rest of Ricks are getting routed out of this exchange! And Doom and Clue, the bot lane, are the only two left for Team Queso to advance towards. Team Queso have three, Ricks. Oh, that's I dangerous for Queso. That's a real tough spot. But Doom we have has to look to at Joey rely. now. We have to look at Joey. He has to pack a shop. It's going to be ready. And no actually, dragon, though. Yeah, no dragon. I think they're going to just back off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Package was used to disengage. I think Ricks are going to back themselves away as well. They're going to utilize that Shen on the top side. And the point I was going to make is if Doom's flash is up and his exhaust is up, I think Ricks can play that little bit more forward. If it's down, if the top side to regroup with Acolyte around this Shen and get Dragon, uh, get Baron lane control. Taunt onto Snitch. Snitch is going to get pulled. Will block some of the escape from the grounded. Random's going to go in. That's no tanky Shen anymore as Random dashes into the bush. He didn't know Queso were there. He opts into the fight and that stasis is going to be everything to take out Doom. Riggs have been stretching forward to try and get it. Snitch is going to die here as well and this might just be it. It's a double kill for Andres. It's serious. Riggs. It's gone. Riggs push forward. They have a wave in the They have 30 lane. seconds. They're going to go through the in a tower. Ricks have 25 seconds left on the death timers. Last year was just their origin story. This win over Ricks is iconic. Team Queso are the first ever WREC champions. This is on an amazing game. Andrew said really showing why he's the best juggler in the region. He's going to Icon Series and he's going to show Europe what we are made of. Oh, Queso have done it again. Who would have written this? Who? How could you write this script? Queso were eliminated early in the first set of the online tournament. They won the Birch tournament. They come into the last chance qualifiers. They make their way through the group, taking a game off of Ricks. And history repeats itself in a finals two years in a row. Team Queso defeat Ricks four games to one. And it's just Andreset and Acolyte leading this team to victory every single time. Some same happened last year, same happened this year. You know, you cannot take anything away from Riggs. What a fantastic performance from them this game. This was not a team difference. This was a jungle diff. This, this is the clutch moments that come through from, from players like Andreset and the rest of Team Queso playing around him. We, we've spent months talking about how Team Queso play for Andreset. And I think uh, at some points in, in the split, it was too one dimensional. And bringing in the ability for Joey to carry yesterday on some of the, the carries just gave them that extra edge. And I think it really refined their playstyle coming into today. And Ricks just weren't quite ready to deal with it. They didn't have enough options to take out both carries. And Queso win four games back to back and defeat Ricks. And it used to be the fact that if you shut down and set, you know, the game was over. But that is not the case in this WISC. If you shut down Ricks, I mean, uh, Andrew said, there's Acolyte, there's Veers, there's Joyce. Everything has led up to this thing. Look at these players standing behind the trophy. It's going to be so exciting. Team Queso are the EMEA champions. I mean, it's just, you know, what's his <laughs> pictures, you know? They want everything. They're giving all the resources to Andres. They're going to give him the trophy podium. They're going <laughs> to give him the trophy. Oh, Team Queso. This, oh.
Uh, I am missing him, you know that right there. I mean, what a fantastic team to watch. It's it's nice to watch these players, you know, smile and laugh with each other, you know, <laughs> even giving the coach a hug. This is really a performance that from everyone, the management, the staff, the coaches, and all these players, you know, Porzi also, you know, really, really respected manager in the European scene. So, I mean, this is just an organization that understands how to win. And it feels like they came here prepared to play their own play style, prepared to get out of groups and, and win with, you know, sometimes in, in esports like this, it's about playing your opponents. Sometimes, you, you know, if, if you're on even footing and, and playing against your opponents, can sometimes win. But I think what always works.